everyone and uh, welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series. And thank you for coming back and listening to this next lecture. And we're going to address uh, a question that I think is very interesting in astrobiology and generally about life in the universe. Uh, will I ever get to meet aliens? Now, I'm sure all of you have watched alien films of one kind or another. Uh, for me, the most iconic film in this genre of meeting aliens is Close Encounters of the Third Kind, a very old film now made in the 1970s, but still, I think, a classic. But I'm sure you've seen Yoda in Star Wars or Aliens Landing in that film Arrival, that I also thought was rather good. But there are many other films out there talking about aliens landing on Earth. And you might have wondered, why hasn't this happened? Why don't aliens land in Princess Street Gardens in Edinburgh and walk up to people, taste some haggis, get back in their spacecraft and take off again? That may seem like a rather eccentric question to ask, but if you think about it for a moment, it's a perfectly reasonable question. Uh, we are obviously an intelligent civilization. Why haven't other civilizations just turned up to meet us? And this is a question that people have wondered about for a long time. Now, before I go any further in, in trying to address this question, let me get two things out of the way. Uh, some people think that aliens are here and that they've seen them uh, in the form of unidentified flying objects. Now, there certainly are things in the sky that are, are not easily explainable. There may be natural phenomena. There may be secret military aircraft. Who knows? People certainly do see things in the sky that they can't explain very easily. But we have no good evidence that they are alien spacecraft of any kind. So uh, the, I'm not saying that there aren't uh, aliens flying around. There are not genuine unidentified flying objects. But certainly at the moment, there's no good scientific evidence that the scientific community would accept is, uh, is good evidence. There are also people who think they've been abducted by aliens. And it's always a big mistake probably to come on YouTube and start talking about that. But let me just get that out of the way and say uh, it doesn't matter what anyone tells you, there is no good reproducible scientific evidence that people have been abducted by aliens. And that's not to um, categorically dismiss these people in, in a rather uh, arrogant way. It's just simply to say that no one has come forward with very good evidence to show that they have been abducted by aliens. So we'll take it as our working assumption, no matter what you think, that there is no current evidence out there that anyone would accept, or at least uh, the scientific community, let alone the world community, would accept uh, as being um, evidence for the existence of aliens. So that does lead us to our question, why have we not been visited by alien intelligences? And this uh, problem, this, this question, it has been famously attached to Enrico Fermi, physicist who first built a nuclear fission pile, a nuclear fission reactor. And apparently at lunch one day in 1950 at the Los Alamos National Labs, he was with his friends, including Edward Teller, and he started asking this question about if there are so many stars in the galaxy, why haven't we been visited by aliens? And I'm sure that Enrico Fermi was actually not the first person to ask this question. People have wondered about aliens for a very long time, but he was uh, like these things tend to do, they get attached to a famous person and the rest is history. So it's called Fermi's Paradox. Uh, and of course, we might point out that um, if we are the only civilization in the universe and there are no other uh, civilizations out there, then of course there's no paradox. It's just a fact of life that aliens have not visited us because they're not out there. So it may well not be a paradox. It might just be uh, better called Fermi's Question. But anyway, Fermi's paradox is what it's called. And many people have wondered what the answer to this is. Why is it that we don't see aliens regularly visiting the planet? And there are lots of interesting solutions uh, to Fermi's paradox. And I thought it would be fun to go through some of these and just explain to you some of the reasons why aliens may not have been here and why you may not have visited or been visited by aliens yourself. And you can decide for yourself which one you think is the most likely. One solution to the Fermi paradox is simply that the origin of life is extremely rare. Uh, we might be the only example of life in the known universe, or at least an extremely rare example of life in the known universe. And if that is the case, uh, then there are no other life forms out there in the universe, let alone intelligent civilizations. 
I think a lot of people are beginning to find that unlikely. We know that uh, you can find amino acids and sugars and nuclear bases, which are the bases in, in the genetic code, in meteorites. And we know that the universe is strewn with organic chemistry, complex carbon chemistry. So in general, we think that the ingredients, uh, the ingredients to make life, are strewn abundantly through the universe. So one might hypothesize that out there in the universe, there are probably other planets on which the material for the origin of life is raining down. But nevertheless, that still doesn't uh, prove that there isn't one chemical reaction in the origin of life that is so unusual, uh, so improbable, that in fact um, the emergence of uh, those chemicals into a, into a replicating life form is extremely rare. So it could be that there are just very few life forms out there and as a consequence, very few or no intelligences out there to travel the universe. This is one uh, rather bleak uh, view of Fermi's paradox. Another view of Fermi's paradox, and one I happen to favour, but I have no evidence that, that this is right, it just happens to be the one I, I think is probably the most parsimonious, is that there are civilizations out there, but they're so far apart and so improbable and so rare that for all intents and purposes, they are alone. We can imagine civilizations uh, emerging in the universe and popping in and out across different galaxies in the universe and disappearing, but very rarely communicating with each other. And maybe out there in some dense star cluster, there's one or two civilizations that are very close to each other, and they get the rare but thrilling opportunity to make first contact with another intelligent civilization. But that opportunity, that extraordinary coming together of alien minds is extremely rare in the universe if it has occurred at all. And that, I think, is a very plausible explanation for the Fermi paradox. We should also remember that it's very difficult to travel the vast distances of the universe. At the moment, we think that the limit to our ability to travel through the universe is set by the speed of light. And if you think about that, that means that if the nearest uh, planets that have civilizations are tens or hundreds of thousands of light years away, maybe even in other galaxies, uh, tens of millions of light years away, the chances of us uh, ever being able to get to these civilizations, let alone communicate with them, or they get to us, is extremely rare. Now, history tells us we should always be very careful. Uh, lots of scientists have made the error of saying things are impossible or technology can't go beyond this limit. So to sit here and say the speed of light is a fundamental limit beyond which we will never go is always going to be a very dangerous thing to say. But it might well be the case. It might well be the case that physics limits us. Of course, physics has to be limited in some way. It's not unlimited. The universe is not unlimited. Uh, it, is, uh, it does run according to the laws of physics. Uh, so no matter how optimistic we are, there must be some limits to physics at some point uh, of our technological development. And perhaps the speed of light is indeed a real limit. And aliens cannot travel across the galaxy, and nor can we travel to them without taking very, very long time periods. And perhaps those time periods are prohibitive. Uh, you could argue, well, the aliens can just be patient. They get on a spacecraft, they take a few million years, but so what? They just wait and they eventually arrive here. But perhaps it's very difficult to travel millions of light years in a spaceship over many, many hundreds of thousands or millions of years without those aliens or us, the case may be, eating each other or attacking each other or the whole civilization on the spaceship uh, simply falling apart. So it's not clear that um, aliens can reach us in reasonable time periods and even if they have persistence and patience, whether they can successfully cross these vast uh, unfathomable distances of space. And for me at least, I think that is a plausible explanation, but you may have your own ideas. So what about other solutions to the Fermi paradox? Well, one solution is that um, the aliens are out there and they're watching us. But a bit like the prime directive in Star Trek, uh, they should not or they have decided not to interfere with our culture and our biology. So they sit on the sidelines, maybe out, out there in the Kuiper Belt or the edges somewhere of the solar system, watching our civilization with great interest, seeing how the pandemic unfolds and how we react to it, taking notes, writing some interesting scientific papers that they publish in their alien journals about the civilization on the Earth, but they never interfere, so we do not know that they're out there. 
Um, it's an interesting idea, it's rather a chilling idea, but also actually a rather exciting idea that they might be there and just waiting for that moment when we're ready to join the Galactic Club. And perhaps when we build our first interstellar spaceship and we head out to the edges of the solar system, that will be the moment that they decide these creatures are ready for a conversation and they'll turn up on our ship and discuss uh, alien politics or galactic politics with us. Um, so one of the problems with, with that idea um, is that it's very difficult to test. Uh, one of the things you, you must bear in mind with the Fermi paradox is that there's lots of interesting ideas, but if they are not testable, then they're not really science. For example, if the aliens keep out of our way and deliberately make themselves undetectable, then by definition we can't detect them, and by definition we cannot set up an experiment to see whether they are out there. If your hypothesis for the fact that we have not been communicated by aliens uh, is simply that we haven't chosen the right wavelengths, the right radio wavelengths to send the messages or listen to their transmissions, that is testable. That it comes within the realms of science because we can simply expand the wavelength range with which we detect the aliens. So some solutions to the Fermi paradox are good science in the sense they can be addressed. We can, uh, we can design experiments to see if that is a solution to the Fermi paradox, that they are in fact communicating with us we just need to look a bit more carefully at different wavelengths. But some solutions, like the aliens uh, make themselves deliberately undetectable, are very difficult to bring within the realms of scientific testability just because by definition uh, they are untestable. So that's just something to bear in mind about the application of, of the scientific method to trying to solve this problem. There is a very chilling solution to the Fermi paradox, and that is that uh, there is a malevolent alien race out there on the rampage destroying civilizations. And anyone who makes a noise uh, gets the attention of the aliens and gets destroyed. So the reason for the interstellar silence, the reason for the lack of alien visitations or communications is that there is an interstellar selection pressure for this cosmic silence. Make a noise and you're finished. Keep yourself to yourself. The aliens leave you alone. That's a very chilling um, explanation. It seems a little bit um, difficult to reconcile that with reality, I think, or, or in terms of trying to find a motivation. Certainly, uh, throughout our own history of our civilization, we have committed egregious crimes against other civilizations. Uh, so it's not out of um, uh, completely out of order this idea that uh, an alien civilization might might travel around causing destruction just as we have on the earth but it does seem difficult to conceive of a motivation for an alien intelligence simply gratuitously traveling around a galaxy destroying other civilizations. Uh, there are other solutions to the Fermi paradox that the aliens are already here and they're running the government and they make themselves undetectable but remember what I said earlier it's very difficult to test you can run around with that idea in your head and you can say that you believe that the aliens are here and that they are already controlling our civilization. It's an interesting idea, but the response to that tends to be, well, so what? How do we actually test that? How would we even show that they're here? Because by definition, they are keeping themselves hidden. Um, yet another solution to the Fermi paradox is that aliens just decide not to go traveling through the galaxy exploring. Um, that may seem um, implausible as well, but if you think about it, human beings are increasingly sending robots into space rather than humans to explore other planets. We get wonderful images back from the Curiosity rover on the surface of Mars, uh, quite extraordinary images sent back by the New Horizons spacecraft as it passed by Pluto of that world. All of this coming back to the Earth without us having to risk human lives or in engage in the danger of sending humans into space. So perhaps the aliens are sitting at home watching lots of images, maybe images of our own civilization sent back by robots, but they do not travel into space themselves or bother communicating. They're more busy uh, online looking at pictures of distant worlds sent back by robots or watching pictures of cats or their alien equivalent, uh, engaging in this sort of online entertainment, uh, but never actually traveling into space uh, themselves. Another solution to the Fermi paradox is that civilizations just don't last long enough to communicate with each other. We all know that uh, in the 1960s through to the 1980s our own civilization stood at the brink of nuclear precipice 
And even today, uh, after um, the end of the Cold War, countries still continue to build atomic weapons. There are other existential threats, such as the development of biological weapons. It's not clear that a civilization uh, uh, manages to maintain a tenure on a planet that can be sustained over many thousands, tens of thousands, or even millions of years, long enough to make communication with other intelligences that, ar that arise in the galaxy or in the universe. Um, and so can come together to communicate. Maybe the chances of two civilizations reaching the same technological capacity at the same time and then being able to communicate with each other is statistically a very low probability event. Uh, either civilizations are too short-lived or their technological trajectories never really intersect or at least never intersect uh, amongst civilizations that are close enough to be able to communicate with each other. So it could be that some of these Fermi paradoxes are actually intermingled. Maybe civilizations are both rare and short-lived. If you put those two things together, you end up with a very low probability that two alien civilizations would ever communicate with one another. So those are some thoughts of the Fermi paradox, but it remains, I think, a fascinating and um, uh, extraordinary reality that there must be a solution to the Fermi paradox because we have no evidence for alien visitations on the earth so for whatever reason there is an explanation for the fact that aliens have not visited us on earth and you can go out there and read many other ideas on the Fermi paradox lots of people have other solutions there are some more outlandish ones some more sensible ones but they're all fascinating because they all address this question uh, why have we not been visited by aliens. And to come back to my original question, will you ever meet aliens? So I'm sorry to say, but unless something absolutely extraordinary happens in the next few decades, and we finally do get visited, and we discover that the solution to the Fermi paradox is that we just needed to wait a few more decades, uh, it's very unlikely that you will meet aliens. And um, on a slightly more depressing note, it, there may well be a possibility that our civilization uh, on, the, on, the, on the longest timescales will never be visited or never visit alien civilizations. We simply don't know. But we should still be positive. We should still look for aliens. We should still look for the signals from alien intelligences. We should still build telescopes to look at planets around other stars because you never know. They may be out there and maybe we just have to make some additional effort. So the Fermi paradox, uh, why aren't the aliens here? Will you ever meet aliens? Remains unresolved but we should continue the search in the universe to try and get an answer to this fundamental and fascinating scientific question. Thanks a lot for joining me again in the Life in the Universe pandemic series. Uh, look after yourselves and I'll be back with uh, future lectures.